My name is Mark Johnson and I'm happy to tell you about work that a PhD student named Alexander Layden and I have been doing that aims to understand the molecular conversations exchanged between the pollen tube and the pistil. The pollinated pistil is a system that integrates hundreds of individual cell-cell interactions to achieve maximal seed production. It's a beautiful system for the study of the basic mechanisms of intracellular communication and it's imperative that we learn as much as possible about, about the molecular basis of seed production so we can meet the demands of a growing population in a changing climate. Consider the journey of a single pollen tube as depicted in this cartoon Arabidopsis pistil. It interacts with several female cell types as it germinates on the stigma, enters the transmitting tissue of the style, turns out onto the ovary surface, grows up a funiculus, enters an ovule micropyle, contacts a synergid cell, and bursts to release its content of two sperm cells, which fuse with the female gametes, the egg and central cell, to produce an embryo and endosperm within a developing seed. This experiment that Alex performed nicely illustrates communication between pollen and pistil. Alex used pollen expressing GFP to pollinate pistils. He then cut these pistils just below the abbreviated Arabidopsis style and placed them on the surface of pollen growth media. Other pollen, only different uh, because it expresses a red fluorescent protein instead of a green fluorescent protein, has been placed directly on the media at the bottom of the dish. Two rows of ovules have been placed in the middle. Now I'm going to show you a movie of a few hours of pollen tube growth, and I hope you'll appreciate some differences between the red and green pollen tubes. As you can see, the green tubes grow faster and further than the red tubes. You can also see that they enter ovules and burst, leaving bright green dots of pollen tube cytoplasm within the ovule. The red pollen tubes grow slower, their direction is random, and when they near ovules, they grow past them and fail to respond to guidance cues being secreted from inside the ovule. So, growth through the pistil changes the pollen tube and enables it to perform essential functions like finding ovules. In collaboration with Ravi Palanivelu's laboratory at the University of Arizona, we used microarray analysis to define the changes in the pollen tube transcriptome that could be responsible for the physiological changes that occur as pollen tubes grow through the pistil. We found that pollen tubes that had grown through pistil tissue had a dramatically different transcriptome, expressing about a thousand genes that were not detected in pollen grains or pollen tubes grown in vitro. Alex identified a group of three closely related MIB transcription factors that are weakly expressed in the pollen grain, but are induced as the pollen tube grows through the pistil. Alex proposed that these transcription factors could be controlling expression of genes that are important for pollen tube pistil communication. To determine which aspect of the pollen pistil dialogue these genes are controlling, Alex constructed a mutant that lacks expression of all three transcription factors. When pollen from these triple mutants is used to pollinate a wild type pistil, seed production is dramatically reduced and many unfertilized ovules remain. Interestingly, Alex found the triple mutant pollen tubes grow just fine and are able to target ovules. However, once inside the ovule, they fail to respond to signals from the female that instruct them to stop growing and burst like the wild type pollen tube shown here. Instead, triple mutant pollen tubes coil inside the ovule. They don't burst or release sperm. This mutant phenotype tells us that growth through the pistil not only makes the pollen tube competent to respond to guidance cues, but it is also required for the pollen tube to be able to recognize that it has arrived at the place where it should burst and release its cargo of sperm for fertilization. We are currently studying the pollen tube genes that are regulated by these three transcription factors and are defining the molecular signals that are exchanged between the pollen tube and its pistil environment to optimize sperm delivery for seed production in flowering plants.